Welcome to Shortcut Reviews, where we get right to the point. Today we're going to look at the Kershaw Eris. This was provided by Outpost76. I'll link his channel in the description below with along with the weights and the measurements. Let's do some size comparison. So here is the Paramilitary 2. You can see that the blade length, the cutting length, is almost identical, and it's pretty close in size to the Steel Will small cut jack. Next to a dollar bill and a zebra pen. This is the knife. This is the size knife that I, I kind of normally carry and, and like. Um, I've done this done this review a bunch of times. I've recorded a bunch of times, and I've tried to not turn it into a rant on why you guys should like Kershaw Speed Safe. You either like it or you don't like it. I, I'm not going to convince anyone either way. So there you go. Um, nice hollow grind. Um, I also do like. I also do like the budget um, stone wash finish. It's well done. You can see the red in my shirt. It's it's nicely reflective. I think the reason why people don't like it is it can actually increase the chance of corrosion versus like a really polished finish. But polished finishes cost money. This is an 8CR13 MOV blade, and this is a budget knife. It has some flourish though. It's got a little bit of a swedgy harpoon up at the top. Uh, hollow grind, thins out nicely to a point, about a six or seven in the sharpness index, and it has kind of a dip here with some jimping here, which is nice, and we'll talk about these two components later as we close the knife. Um, it does have a, a sharpening choil, but it, they really kind of missed it. It's not big enough. It's got a nice smile here. Uh, there's, the, there's the blade on both sides. Certainly a nice functional cutter with that hollow grind. The jimping, it's got a little bit of a ramp here on the jimping, so it really does help lock your hand in. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more, um, but it is aggressive enough, which is nice. And you guys know one of the things that I really like about so many of the Spyderco humps is that it gives you a nice hump to push into if you're doing a push cut or a piercing cut. Um, this is the same thing, just, just less. Okay. And... It is a speed safe design, so when we close it, we get to about halfway before the torsion bar clicks in. And that halfway is before it's going to hit your thumb, which is nice. And then you change your hand position, put your thumb on top, and that little divot right there is a nice place for your thumb. Closes. Just perfect. Um, jimping on the flipper tab. Not a huge flipper tab. Opens up because it's got speed safe. It's got a torsion bar in here. Torsion bar can break, of course, guys. Um, I haven't had any problems, but people have had problems. Uh, mechanical things break, but it does provide a very easy one hand opening. You don't have to worry about loading this or pushing it the right way or the detent even because there isn't one. Um, you just you just open it. So pretty nice. Uh, frame lock, all steel, which is one of the reasons why they've kept this pretty minimal. There is no lightning pockets on the inside, so they've had to keep the handle pretty small or else the thing will get heavy. There's no over uh, travel protection here. There is steel on steel lockup, of course, because it's a steel frame lock, and there's the lockup about halfway. There is access from this side, so you can see they've, they've uh, made a little choil here to get your finger in there to close it. Centering is almost perfect, um, is perfect. Has a pretty decent lanyard hole, not tubed, but the blade is very far away from it, and the blade is not close to the edge here, so no, no problems there. Three pillars, six screws, so it's screwed in from either side, which is nice. Uh, just a shoulder blade stop pin, but that flow through construction is nice. And then lastly, it is tip up, right or left hand carry. The weird thing is, though, is this clip is not straight. It's got a curve to it, so I'm having a hard time visioning what it looks like on this side. It's going to be a little bit different. Um, obviously it's going to be on the scale, but it is going to look a little different because it's got a little bit of a curve. It's got a little bit of a little bit of shape to it too, which is pretty pretty interesting at least. This is it in the pocket. So you can see that most of the lanyard tube and a bit of the knife hold up. What I have found is with screws on the outside like this, um, that it gives you a little bit of traction when you grab it to pull it out of your pocket. So pretty nice budget EDC knife. Really where um, this knife, which was just introduced in 2017, is uh, price-wise, you got about $27 or so. And you, know, you can get a D2 blade uh, with G10 
for about the same price or you can get a Rake 801 for the same price. So that, that's really the problem. The design has to speak to you. Uh, steel handles, and I, I fill this with the Rake. Actually, the Rake I carry a fair amount. And uh, when it's cold, when it's 20 degrees outside, that, that handle is cold. Uh, G10 really starts to shine when the weather, or carbon fiber, when the weather is chilly. So thanks again for this quick review of the Kershaw. Eris, and thanks again to Outpost 76 and all you guys out there and gals, stay sharp and have a great week. And that is the train going by my apartment.